The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish. Ever wondered which Hollywood stars had their lives turned upside down by their vices? Today, we're revealing the 35 worst vice addicts in Hollywood history. You won't believe the shocking stories we've uncovered. Number 35, Richard Burton. Richard Burton's drinking habits are legendary. During the film of The Night of the Iguana, Burton's alcohol consumption was so extreme that biographer Robert Sellers called it one of the wonders of the 20th century. Imagine starting your day with a beer at 7 a.m., finishing off a case, and then switching to hard liquor. Burton did just that. His need for constant booze was so intense that he forced the production to build bars at both the top and bottom of a staircase he needed to climb to get to the set. Burton's excessive drinking began at an alarmingly young age. He started regularly consuming alcohol at just 11 years old. You're stuck with that shadowy figure, always, always coming at you, always coming at you. And there is every conceivable excuse, take a drink. I got a bad note, so I take a drink. I got a good note, so I take a drink. Unfortunately, his lifestyle caught up with him, and in 1984, at the age of 58, he passed away from a cerebral hemorrhage, much like his father. His physical deterioration was undoubtedly hastened by years of heavy drinking. Number 34, Spencer Tracy. Next up, Spencer Tracy, one of Hollywood's most charming leading men, had a dark side hidden from the public eye. Described by biographer Bailey as a self-flagellating, self-immolating, utterly filthy drunk, Tracy would appear into the Hotel St. George in Brooklyn Heights for weeks-long binges. Picture this, downing bottle after bottle of whiskey while sitting naked in a bathtub, never getting up, not even to use the toilet. That's how deep Tracy's addiction went. MGM, aware of the danger he posed to himself and others, created the Tracy Squad, an ambulance driver, a doctor, and four security guards dressed as paramedics who were on call 24-7. They gave every bar within 25 miles a dedicated phone number to call if Tracy showed up. As soon as the call came in, the squad would rush to the scene, find Tracy causing some drunken trouble, and whisk him away to his home. There, they would guard him until he sobered up. Number 33, Clara Bow. Clara Bow, the original It Girl, rose from a troubled Brooklyn childhood where her mother was insane and her father was a lecherous hanger-on. After her breakout role in the 1927 film It, Bo embraced her fame with a wild, carefree lifestyle. She was known for drinking, gambling, swearing, and screwing to such an extent that she could shock even the most jaded Hollywood insiders. One notorious incident involved Paramount President B.P. Schulberg, who hosted a fancy dinner and invited Judge Ben Lindsay, recently ousted for advocating premarital sex. When Bo arrived drunk, she introduced herself to the judge with a French kiss, even though his wife was beside him. Then, while dancing, she began unbuttoning his shirt and even attempted to unzip his pants. Schulberg had to quickly remove Bo from the situation. Later, she was puzzled by the reaction, saying, If he likes all that modern stuff, how come he's such an old stick in the mud? Number 32, Natalie Wood. Natalie Wood, another Hollywood wild child, started drinking wine with Frank Sinatra at just 15. What do you got? Um, scotch? Gin? Bourbon? Vodka? I thought you didn't drink. <laughs> I don't. Well, what are you running here, the USO? Her adventures grew more daring with age. One infamous episode involved her Rebel Without a Cause co-star, Dennis Hopper and Nick Adams. They planned a threesome, but Wood insisting on bathing in champagne first, like Jean Harlow. Hopper and Adams filled a bathtub with several cases of champagne, and Wood disrobed and submerged herself. However, the alcohol caused her intense pain as soon as it touched her most sensitive areas, and she began screaming. As biographer Bailey puts it, as soon as her most sensitive areas came in contact with the alcohol, she shrieked in pain. Thus was the orgy extinguished. Number 31, Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen's performance in Apocalypse Now is legendary, but his off-screen struggles were just as intense. He admitted he was dangerously drunk during filming to the point where he could hardly stand up. On the day of his 36th birthday, he had been drinking with friends before shooting his infamous scene. When director Francis Ford Coppola asked him to approach a mirror, Sheen didn't realize how close he was and accidentally struck the glass, cutting his hand open. Reflecting on that day, Sheen said, I was so intoxicated, I didn't realize how close to the mirror I was. Number 30, Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher, best known for her role as Princess Leia in the Star Wars saga, was also a celebrated writer who spoke openly about her battles with addiction. 
She became an icon for a whole new group of fans through her candid discussions on the subject. Fisher's daughter, Billy Lord, released a heartfelt statement after her mother's death, noting that Fisher battled drug addiction and mental illness her entire life and ultimately died of it. She was purposefully open in all of her work about the social stigma surrounding these diseases. I know my mom. She'd want her death to encourage people to be open about their struggles. Number 29, Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins, the acclaimed actor famous for his role as Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs, has also faced significant personal challenges. Now then, tell me, what did Miggs say to you? Multiple Miggs in the next cell. He hissed at you. What did he say? Despite his on-screen prowess, Hopkins struggled with alcoholism for years. In the mid-1970s, he reached a breaking point and decided to seek help, giving up drinking in 1975. Number 28, W.C. Fields. W.C. Fields was an alcoholic nutcase. W.C. Fields wasn't an actor. That's not a put-down, but a reference to the fact that the misanthropic alcoholic jerk he played in all his movies wasn't a character. The real-life Fields was just as moody, and importantly, just as drunk as the screen version. In a look back at Fields' classic 1940 comedy, The Bank Dick, Roger Ebert gave a detailed insight into Fields' alcohol-fueled madness. The overweight, modeled star was more or less continuously drunk for his entire career. He was obsessed by the thought of being caught short without a drop, to the extent that he hoarded enough liquor in his attic to keep him going for 25 years. One version of the story holds this was an insurance move in case Prohibition returned. Inevitably, this dedication to chasing the Green Fairy, plus any other fairies of any color that might conceivably get him drunk, impacted his career. Late in life, Fields would demand $15,000 for each screenplay he wrote. Any producer foolish enough to stump up the cash would get some vague scrawlings on the back of an envelope, if that. Then there was the way he sometimes liked to just mess with regular folks. According to his old friend Groucho Marx, Fields used to hide behind bushes on his front lawn and shoot at passerbys with a BB gun. Remove the financial institution angle from the bank dick and you have a pretty accurate description of Fields. Number 27, Veronica Lake. Veronica Lake was an actress best known for her femme fatale film roles. She was very successful initially, but her career quickly declined, in part due to her drinking. The Sullivan's Travels in 1941 actress died in 1973 at the age of 50. She was hospitalized with declining health brought on by hepatitis and renal failure, both complications of her alcohol addiction. Her mental faculties were also in sharp decline. Lake had suffered from steadily increasing paranoia since the mid-60s. Estranged from her children, Lake died alone on July 7, 1973. Rumor had it that it took days for someone to identify her body. Number 26, William Holden. William Holden was a handsome, popular, and talented actor, but he struggled with alcohol addiction. Despite the fame and winning an Academy Award in 1954, William Holden faced a lifelong battle with drinking and alcoholism. I'm drunk. I'm drunk, so I'm going home. The years of his drinking started taking its toll on Holden's chiseled looks by the 1960s. Despite being relatively young still, he was considered Hollywood old school and began losing roles to younger stars like Steve McQueen and Paul Newman. This in turn caused Holden to drink more. He did continue to make some good movies like The Wild Bunch in 69, The Towering Inferno in 74, and his last movie SOB in 81. However, by that time he was no longer the handsome leading man of movies. Longtime girlfriend Stephanie Powers has said, drinking for him was a disease. Powers refused to marry him until he gave up alcohol. They never married. Holden died alone in his apartment after slipping and hitting his head while intoxicated. Number 25, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe, an iconic actress and symbol of beauty, was found dead on August 4, 1962. Her death was initially ruled a suicide attributed to an overdose of barbiturates and chloral hydrate. However, conspiracy theories suggesting murder abound. Toxicology studies reveal high levels of pentobarbital and chloral hydrate in her body, leading to her tragic demise. Number 24, Larry Hagman. Larry Hagman, known for his roles in Dallas and I Dream of Jeannie, developed liver cancer and cirrhosis of the liver in the 1990s due to decades of drinking and underwent a life-saving liver transplant. He got sober at that point, but the anti-rejection medications given to organ transfer patients increased the risk of developing cancer. He announced that he had been diagnosed with throat cancer in 2011, and in 2012, he ultimately died of acute myeloid leukemia. 
Number 23, Errol Flynn. Born in Hobart, Tasmania, Australia on June 20th, 1909, Errol Flynn became famous for his roles in Hollywood movies, most notably The Adventures of Robin Hood in 1938, as a romantic swashbuckling villain. With multiple felony issues and misdemeanors, Flynn's off-screen life was every bit as eye-catching as his on-camera appearances. He was a reputed jack-of-all-trades who frequently took part in high-stakes games that were in harmony with his philosophy of prudence and immaturity. Flynn symbolized the opulent and hedonistic manner of life typical of Hollywood stars during this era, and his public image for heavy drunkenness and raunchy behavior was directly linked to his gambling habit. Number 22, Peter Cook. Dudley Moore and Peter Cook took the comedy world by storm in the 1960s and 70s. We rolled all over the floor. Yeah. I picked up, I said, get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here, <laughs> you Italian thing. I said, get out of here. <laughs> Cook is regarded as one of the most influential comedians of his generation, inspiring Monty Python and others who emerged in his wake. He died at 57 of a gastrointestinal bleed, a direct result of severe liver damage caused by decades of excessive drinking. Number 21, John Belushi. John Belushi died of an accidental drug overdose at 33. His was a short life, but one packed with a lifetime's worth of memorable performances, from standalone Saturday Night Live sketches to all-time favorite movies. For years, funny man and Saturday Night Live icon John Belushi struggled with drug and alcohol addiction. Eventually, he lost the battle, dying from a speedball overdose in 1982, brought on by a combination of heroin and cocaine. Number 20, Freddie Prinz. Fame came fast and furious for young comedian Freddie Prinz. Seemingly overnight, he went from stand-up comedy to television as the star of the hit sitcom Chico and the Man. Prince had found success but struggled with depression and became increasingly dependent on drugs. His wife left him, and as the third season of Chico and the Man was drawing to a close, he died by suicide, shooting himself in the head while under the influence of drugs. He was just 22. Number 19, Elvis Presley. Four decades after his death, fans still mourn for Elvis Presley. The king of rock and roll was just 42 when he died. Though the official cause of death was a heart attack, there is evidence that Presley had been addicted to prescription painkillers for years before he died, and these may have contributed to his early death. Number 18, Judy Garland. As a young star at MGM, Judy Garland said she was prescribed amphetamines to stay awake and keep up with the frantic pace of making one film after another, as well as barbiturates to take so that she could sleep. Her long battle with drugs and alcohol ultimately led to her death from a barbiturate overdose. She was 47. Number 17, Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce was a groundbreaking comedian and free speech activist. You want me to touch it when I don't feel like touching it? Even when I got a headache? Yeah. You want me to touch it even when I don't get any pleasure from it? Yeah. Throughout the final decade of his life, Bruce was beset by severe drug addiction, using heroin, methamphetamine, and diluted daily, suffering numerous health problems and personal strife as a result. His death was caused by an overdose of morphine at 40. Number 16, David Cassidy. David Cassidy was a 1970s teen idol best known for his role as Keith Partridge on the sitcom The Partridge Family. Cassidy went on to have a successful career as a musician, but his life was troubled behind the scenes. I was always a musician. I was played, but I never pursued my career as a musician. It was just fate, you know, the way the stars aligned themselves. In 2008, he admitted publicly that he had a drinking problem. In 2017, he died of liver and kidney failure as a result of years of alcohol abuse. He was 67 years old. Number 15, Margot Hemingway. The granddaughter of Ernest Hemingway, Margot Hemingway struggled with her fame after she became an overnight celebrity and the world's first million dollar supermodel in the 1970s. On July 2, 1996, news broke that supermodel Margot Hemingway died of an intentional overdose at 42 years old. In the last years of her life, her decades-long career had been marred by a public struggle with addiction. Number 14, Peter Lore. Peter Lore was whacked out on morphine the entire time. If you've ever seen a picture of Peter Lore, you've probably noticed his eyes, all droopy like he's about to fall asleep. 
Lore leveraged his weird looks into a career playing oddballs and villains, but his distinctive expression may have had less to do with genetics and more to do with what the Casablanca actor was sticking in his arm. It's our little secret. <laughs> and now... Lore spent his entire career whacked out on morphine. His addiction started long before he ever graced a Hollywood screen, following an appendix operation in his native Europe. According to the London Review of Books, his doctors kept the young actor so full of morphine that he wound up hopelessly addicted. He carried the addiction over with him when he transitioned to Hollywood, where he also got hooked on prescription pills and cough medicine. For stretches of his career, Laura was even choosing roles based on how they interfered with his drug taking. He took the part of Mr. Moto in an eight-film series because he needed drug money, but also because they'd let him shoot up in his trailer. Whole films were shot with him so smacked out he could barely climb the stairs, and he still outacted everyone else on set. Number 13. Lupe Velez Lupe Velez, also known as the Mexican Spitfire. A more accurate portrayal might be as the girl who gave so few dams she made Rep Butler look like he could use his own collection to dam the Colorado. In an essay, MIT professor Henry Jenkins once recounted all of her outbursts which ranged from staging fights in public to attending wrestling matches and screaming for blood to unzipping Kerry Cooper's fly at a social gathering and sniffing his crotch in an effort to detect whether he'd been seeing a man. That last sentence highlights another of Vela's obsession. In her life, Vela's tore through men like an out-of-control combine harvester, but she could never shake her infatuation with Cooper. This may have been due to her assertion that the high noon star had the biggest organ in Hollywood, or it may have been due to the fact that Cooper was the only man on earth who could keep up with her hell raising. Not that the two always got on. On one memorable occasion, an angry Velez stabbed him. Number 12. Greta Garbo Greta Garbo was so obsessed with the health benefits of fad diets that she subjected herself to meals the UN would classify as biological weapons. Garbo was a total recluse who hated venturing out so much she once managed to miss her own wedding. Just about the only person she allowed in was Gaylord Hauser, who just happened to be a nutritionist with a sideline in Crazy. He convinced Garbo to spend decades following his dietary plans. One involved eating nothing but raw yeast with occasional treats of buttermilk. Another involved Garbo dining only on spinach for a full three weeks. Luckily, she abandoned that diet before she had to choose between going to the hospital and trading blows with Bluto down at the dockyards. Number 11, Todd Bridges. Todd Bridges has had many roles, but he was a child actor in The Waltons, Little House on the Prairie, and most famously, Different Strokes. Out of three stars of Different Strokes, Todd Bridges is the only one alive today, but he also went through several difficulties. When the show ended, he felt like his life was over, and his fall from stardom began when he made the headlines for being arrested and doing drugs. And um, later on, it led to cocaine, which led to crack cocaine, which led to meth. And um, it led just to a child who was suffering inside. Bridges was so out of control that in 1989, he was accused of attempting murder for shooting a drug dealer several times after a cocaine binge. Eventually, after spending only nine months behind bars, he was acquitted. Number 10, Barbara Payton. Barbara Payton was once an aspiring actress whose promise was blighted by her problems with alcohol and drug addiction. Her life was the subject of much public interest. Peyton's battles with substance abuse got her in trouble for check fraud and prostitution and were her ultimate cause of death. She died from heart and liver failure at the age of 39. Number 9. Cary Grant Born into a super poor family in Bristol with a cheating father and a mother who straight up vanished, he later turned out that the cheating father had needlessly had her committed to an insane asylum. Grant spent most of his acting life dealing with his hidden demons. After decades of torment, he was finally turned on to LSD therapy by his third wife. What happened in those sessions evidently blew his mind. From 1958 to 1961, Grant dropped acid a minimum of 100 times. But rather than make the inside of his head resemble the plot of a yellow submarine, it turned him into an evangelical for his pick-me-up. This is acid we're talking about, so the things Grant was evangelizing about sounded screwy at best. One vision Grant fondly recalled involved him turning into a gigantic wing and blasting off into space. Number 8. Natalie Cole Famed singer and daughter of legendary singer Nat King Cole, Natalie Cole has won countless awards and accolades throughout her career. She has sold over 30 million records worldwide and had a net worth of over $5 million. But she lost it all in the year 2000 after she was forced to file for bankruptcy. 
She notes that her prior drug addiction in the 70s and 80s was one of the reasons why she lost most of her fortune. Number 7. Hugh Hefner The Hef Although contemporary reviews of Hugh Hefner are not in any way positive or in any way favorable to him, it is undeniable that he had a huge impact on American culture throughout the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Hefner's Playboy Mansion was the bastion of Reagan money-cultured America. Shiny things and bikini-clad excess. He didn't shy away from it, and neither did the rich and powerful. Hefner played many gambling games and used to play not only for money, but also for undressing. The businessman even had his own institution in Las Vegas, the Playboy Club and Fantasy Tower. And in the 60s, he was the owner of a casino in London. It is said that in the best times of the London Playboy, its regular visitors were the Beatles, Woody Allen, and Rudolf Nareev. Number 6. Frank Sinatra Frank Sinatra became well-known as one of the most significant singers and performers in American music and film history after being born and raised in Hoboken, New Jersey on December 12, 1915. It keeps going around I've been a puppet, a puppet his career lasted over five decades, during which he won a prestigious Academy Award and multiple Grammy Awards. Everybody knew Sinatra had a special bond with Leave Things to Chance games, especially when in Las Vegas, where he became a regular, almost daily consummate and member at casinos. He was the main figure, main role in the development of the Las Vegas Strip, and his impact and knowledge of these kinds of games often coincided with bouts of high-stakes gambling. He was all into games like Blackjack and Baccarat, which had an impact on his risk-taking persona both on and off the screen. Number 5. Clark Gable Clark Gable, nicknamed the King of Hollywood, was an iconic actor who starred in more than 60 films. Born on February 1, 1901, in Cadiz, Ohio, Gable's career peaked during the classic Hollywood cinema era, with his most famous role as Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind in 1939. Gable was known to partake in gambling, often seen at racetracks betting on horses. His gambling era was not just a phase or the pastime, but a well-known part of his Hollywood lifestyle. He was considered as one of Hollywood's wealthiest gamblers. Gable's playing habits were something that had an impact on the Hollywood lifestyle, where people were living a life of luxury and thrill. Number 4. Samuel L. Jackson Longtime Hollywood star Samuel L. Jackson has been very vocal about his issues with drug abuse. At one recent movie premiere, Jackson described the way he was saved by his wife and daughter. They put my butt in rehab the next day and supported me and pushed me and gave me a reason to get up and go and chase it day after day. Number 3. Chris Farley Chris Farley chose comedy as a career after watching his father roar with laughter while watching John Belushi in Animal House, according to People magazine. He followed in Belushi's comedic footsteps, starting out with Chicago's Second City Troupe, and like Belushi, he found fame on Saturday Night Live, joining the cast in 1990. Sadly, also like Belushi, Farley became addicted to drugs and, like his idol, died of an overdose at 33. Chris Farley battled persistent and simultaneous struggles with excessive alcohol consumption, drug abuse, and overeating. Yeah, here we go again. Another treat from the road. Grand order. Great banana. Trick of the day. Great. His attempts to address these issues led him in and out of Alcoholics Anonymous meetings, rehab facilities, and weight loss centers as he battled to find peace and recalibrate his life. In the late 1990s, Farley's behavior grew increasingly alarming, with reports of heavy consumption of both heroin and cocaine. Concerned friends like Adam Sandler warned him of the potential consequences, with Sandler stressing, you're gonna die from that, buddy. You've got to stop. It's not going to end right. Others, like Chevy Chase, employed tough love tactics, leveraging Farley's admiration for SNL's original problem child, John Belushi. Chase told him, look, you're not John Belushi, and when you overdose or kill yourself, you will not have had the same acclaim that John did. You don't have the record of accomplishment that he had. In a return to SNL just two months before his death in 1997, Farley hosted the show he once dominated. His diminished stamina was apparent to the audience and cast alike, making it clear that something was amiss. Number 2. Bruce Lee Martial arts legend Bruce Lee was a secret drug user, letters have revealed. The Enter the Dragon film star wrote over 40 notes to a fellow actor about his spiraling habit before his early death. The letters to Robert Baker show how he supplied Lee with drugs including cocaine, LSD, and cannabis from 1969 until the star died aged 32 in 1973. While it was whispered in Hollywood that Lee had a drug habit, the letters not only confirm it but reveal his dependence on them. 
Number 1. Walter Matthau Originally making a name for himself in movies like The Odd Couple in 68 and Charade in 63, this classic movie actor continued to act well past typical retirement age in 90s comedies like Grumpy Old Man in 93 and Dennis the Menace in 93 as well. But he wasn't just a movie star, he was also an avid gambler. He once estimated his lifetime gambling losses at $5 million. He preferred to wager on sporting events, particularly on basketball or horse racing. While he wasn't a big fan of Las Vegas casino action, he admitted that it was hard for him to walk past a craps table without trying a few rolls of the dice. Walter Matthau is addicted to gambling and knows it all too well. He compounds his illness by actually not wanting to win. His excitement and enjoyment in gambling come from losing. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into Hollywood's wildest vices, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Check out our other videos for more crazy celebrity stories. We'll see you in the next one.